Toronto, considered one of the best places to live in Canada, is a sprawling mega metropolis with so many exciting neighborhoods that it can be hard to choose where to live. For those seeking the perfect balance between a fulfilling personal life and a thriving career, choosing the right neighborhood is crucial. Regardless, living in Toronto will be a life-changing experience no matter which neighborhood you choose to call home. Beyond Toronto, in the greater Toronto area, you can find just as many vibrant districts that are filled with restaurants, parks, and modern homes. To help you choose where to live, skim at the lists below of the best neighborhoods in Toronto and the greater Toronto area. So, here is the list of the 10 best places to live in Toronto, Canada. Before we start, make sure you subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon for the latest upcoming travel videos. Here we go. Number 1. High Park, Swansea. High Park, Swansea is a charming and vibrant neighborhood in the west end of Toronto. To the south, Swansea meets Lake Ontario, offering residents access to Sunnyside Beach and Gus Ryder Pool in the summer. It is conveniently located near grocery stores, restaurants, as well as schools like Swansea Junior and Senior Public School. Most homes are single-family houses, and there are also apartments and condos, with a notable presence of individuals aged 35 to 64. Swansea has an impressively low crime rate of 3.38 crimes per 1,000, making it ideal for families, nature enthusiasts, and those seeking a balanced urban-suburban lifestyle in the heart of Toronto. As of November 2023, the average property buying cost is $745,000, while the average rent for a one-bedroom apartment is $2,350. Number 2. Kensington Market This bohemian neighborhood has a century-old reputation for culture, so much so that it's a national historic site of Canada, and you can see it bursting from every market stall, vintage clothing shop, art space, and indie shop. Walking through the streets, you'll be met with beautiful murals, brightly colored buildings, and the mouth-watering smells of the world. On Sundays, cars are banned and the market takes over. The market used to be a way for alienated early 20th century Jewish immigrants to make a living, and it has since grown into a glorious, overwhelming mixture of cultural offerings from around the world. Live in the area for years, and between the market, the ever-changing and eclectic shops, and the specialty meat, bread, cheese, and fish shops, you still won't manage to fully absorb everything it has to offer. And yes, it may get confusing when you're telling Brits that you're moving to Kensington Market, but you won't be alone. Toronto is also home to Caledonia, York, and Swansea. Number 3. Whitby. Whitby is an affordable choice with lower home prices and rental costs compared to the city of Toronto or nearby GTA townships. Locals take pleasure in participating in outdoor activities by exploring numerous parks and trails while also exploring the waters along the Lake Ontario shoreline. Considering the distance to downtown Toronto, GO Transit provides both bus and train services from Whitby. The 52-minute bus journey to Union Station costs $9 to $13. Safety is ensured with a low crime rate of 5.95 crimes per 1,000 people. It is worth noting that Whitby has a low crime rate of 5.95 crimes per 1,000 people. It remains a welcoming and inviting place to call home, particularly for those who appreciate its rich heritage and vibrant community. As of November 2023, the average property buying cost is $957,000, while the average rent for a one-bedroom apartment is $1,848. Number 4. The Beaches The Beaches lies on the shore of Lake Ontario, just a few kilometers east of Toronto's financial-slash-commercial district. Streetcars from the beaches take half an hour or so to reach the commercial district. The area offers its residents, and large numbers of visitors, a thriving, family-friendly, cafe culture, with plenty of restaurants and bars. 
the area can become too busy at times for some residents. Most of the beach's 20,000 residents have British Isles ancestry. Britons and other Europeans continue to make up the majority of newcomers. About one-tenth of the beach's population is made up of visible minorities. The main groups are Chinese and Southeast Asian. You will need to budget in the region of $1.7 million to buy an average detached home in the beaches and more for the most sought-after parts. $1.3 million will buy you a typical townhouse and $900,000 plus will buy you a typical two-bedroom condo. Crime levels in the sometimes very busy beaches, while never high, are not as low as in our other choices. Number 5. The Danforth. Danforth has historically been an inroad to the action, not the site of it. These days, the bustling area and this year's top-ranking neighborhood spoils residents with quality restaurants, bars, shopping, and schools, all packed within its boundaries, which stretch from Pape to Woodbine. What changed? It's the type of place that has always been quietly, consistently good, scoring high on almost every metric, particularly in education, employment, and entertainment. Beyond the vibrant main drag, families are drawn to the abundance of green space, like nearby Withrow Park, to the south, the peaceful quiet of its leafy inner streets, and, in a city of skyrocketing real estate prices, the relative affordability of its housing. Danforth also scores high for access to grocery stores and pharmacies as well as its proximity to Michael Guerin Hospital. Plus, with Line 2 transecting the area, residents can hop on the TTC and be downtown or across town in minutes. Number 6. West Queen West. A decade ago, Vogue magazine named WQW one of the world's coolest neighborhoods. The Strip, which extends from Bathurst to Dovercourt, isn't about to relinquish the crown anytime soon. It remains a reliable arbiter of taste, well-loved for its quirky local shops, buzzy bars and restaurants, and iconic boutique hotels. Today, it's usually the first to get cult fave establishments, skincare bar formula fig, inventor of the aptly dubbed Cool Girl Facial, and sustainable Canadian clothing brand Cotton both opened their flagship Toronto locations in the area. The neighborhood, which scores high in the entertainment and shopping categories, is also a frequent home to popular on TikTok retail pop-up The Welcome Market and the eponymous Queen West Art Crawl. While the area loses points for affordability, it scores high for commuters of all types thanks to the Queen Streetcar, a robust network of bike lanes, and many walkable streets. Number 7. The Annex. Much like many other neighborhoods in the west end of Toronto, the Annex is a hub for young professionals and creative young adults. Historically home to students and staff of the University of Toronto, this neighborhood begins at the northwest boundary of what would be considered downtown. The main U of T campus is at the southeast end of the neighborhood, while the annex itself is a combination of leafy streets with old houses and pubs and eateries that are friendly to the student budget. It's by no means a student's only area though, the strip on Bloor has seen a host of new businesses move in over the last few years to make this an attractive area for residents of any age group or background. That change has seen the area lose some of its character, however. Famous Toronto landmarks Honest Ed's and the Brunswick House Bar have both closed their doors in recent years, but with Christie Pitts Park just to the west and Casa Loma to the north, the annex still possesses plenty beyond its bars, restaurants, and bookstores. It also has the benefit of being close to three subway stations on Line 2, Bathurst, Spadina, and St. George. Number 8. Roncevals. Historically, this is the Polish neighborhood of Toronto, but within the last decade, Roncevals has become something of a haven for creative and hipster types. Ronce, as the locals call it, refers to the areas surrounding Roncevals Avenue running south from Bloor to King Street West in the west end of Toronto. Roncevals is one of the prettier Toronto neighborhoods, with various independent shops, bars, restaurants, and coffee shops offering plenty of character. 
As one might imagine, rents have risen in line with Ronsi's popularity, but remains cheaper than in Toronto neighborhoods closer to downtown. One drawback is that it requires a bit of a commute to downtown. Unless you are at the north end of the neighborhood and can easily get to Dundas West subway station, you are most likely going to have to trundle downtown on a streetcar, which can be somewhat frustrating as streetcars tend to vary busy, very quickly at peak times. Number 9. Runnymede Bloor West Village Runnymede Bloor West Village is the perfect alchemy of lively and quiet. The expanse of Bloor that runs through the neighborhood is chock full of independent shops, like the beef-centric Meaty Eats, run by fifth-generation butchers, popular restaurants, including Queen's Pasta Cafe, a neighborhood anchor, and great bars, notably English-style pubs Shakey's and Brighton's. The surrounding area, meanwhile, is a paradise for families, offering good schools, more than a dozen, and an oasis of relative affordability, especially compared with nearby neighborhoods. Plus, it's close to Roncevelles, the junction, and the vast, vibrant green space that is High Park. With easy access to the core via Jane and Runnymede stations, the area also scores high on transit. Number 10. Young and St. Clair. Known as the beating heart of Midtown Toronto, Young St. Clair is a neighborhood where culture and commerce meet. This neighborhood offers a perfect mix of big city life with a suburban feel because of its proximity to the city center with only a 17-minute drive. The main streets form a lively commercial hub with various office buildings, restaurants, shops, and cafes, offering a range of choices for shopping, dining, and entertainment. Young St. Clair is all about community and gathering people together. You can find a list of their upcoming festivals and celebrations on the neighborhood website. The neighborhood ranks as one of the best neighborhoods in Toronto, with a total crime rate of 7.56 per 1,000 people. As of November 2023, the average property buying cost is $907,000, while the average rent for a one-bedroom apartment is $3,325.28. This makes it an inviting choice for those seeking both urban vibrancy and a secure environment. The last word. So, guys, these are the best places to live in Toronto, Canada. Hope you will like it and appreciate it. People who come to this city are amazed by all of the awesome things there are to do and see. Toronto has a reputation as being one of North America's best cities. It regularly tops lists as one of the safest cities in the world and has been voted one of the best major cities when it comes to living costs. The Economist named the city the best city in the world in 2015, and since then, it has remained a strong contender in the top 10. Thanks to the very distinct districts, Toronto really does have something for everyone. The difference between the clearly defined areas is pronounced, and it's no wonder so many people love living in Toronto and the greater Toronto area. Whatever you want in your dream home, Toronto has it, you just have to find it. So, if you love to travel and you want to see the whole world then this is the channel that gives you a list of the best places to visit in the world. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon for the latest upcoming travel videos. Bye bye, see you in the next video.